Hey guys, it's Dane at Jonah Guitars, and uh, I got a brand new build series uh, I'm gonna start uploading. Uh, it's about this guy right here, the Gecko, and uh, all of the uh, the whole process of building will be uh, covered. It's a, it's gonna be a very complete uh, series. So I hope you join me, and uh, we'll see you there. So I'm prepping frets for gecko or the gecko and um, I tried to uh, kind of uh, update my this is my homemade fret bender and it's basically a couple rollers interesting that must be the focus <laughs> moving the, the picture um, so I, I Got another roller that was larger diameter and matched this diameter on this bottom washer. So I have a pair of washers here with a washer between. This roller I replaced with, I replaced this before with this roller and it didn't, doesn't have a groove for the fret tangle in so I just wanted to roll the whole time you were trying to push the fret, fret through. So I, uh, I went back to the other design a little extra support washer behind it. And originally I had tried to get this to where it would roll, but getting that to roll and then also being an adjustable slot, that isn't an option. So there's a big enough gap here that the tang will slide through that and then these will push, it'll just push through that slot in the between the washers and that rolls through. Now this one was already radiused because I, I just shoved it through there. This is just slightly over bent for the 16 inch uh, end of the fretboard. And I'll just throw that right here for a second. But it's just slightly over bent for this area, very, very slightly. But as soon as it starts coming this way, it's into a tighter radius. So we'll come back toward the middle with that. Uh, let's see how it is for the. You can't see what I'm doing up here. I'm just checking it against the 12 inch radius. It's actually almost, I was looking at that backwards, but I just stayed. It's almost perfect on the 12 inch radius, a little over bent on the 16. So I will uh, take another piece of wire and push it through here. And then if I have to, I'll readjust the wheel and give myself a slightly, slightly greater uh, radius. I um, I just I don't know why I haven't yet. I just have not purchased a, a decent fret bender. Um, I saw one. I saw one displayed on somebody's channel. Might have been eons and eons ago. In fact, I'm positive now. That I think I think it was on Dave's fun world of fun stuff. I think it was on his channel. Anyway, so I'll run this through a couple times, but I, I did see a, um, I did see a really nice uh, fret bender made out of plate steel with a crank on it, and it seemed like it was fairly reasonable at around eighty dollars. Uh, but when I made this, I was brand new into doing this sort of thing, and I just certainly did not have eighty dollars to spend on on a fret bender. Uh, yeah, I want a little more radius on this one, so I'm going to I'm going to make an adjustment on this, which is in essence pushing this guy up a little bit, just to make it a little tighter, and uh, I'm going to turn it off for that. Okay, it took some doing, but I readjusted this, and uh, it's just a tad tighter than it was. And we'll see. Looks like it's curling it pretty good. It's very, very difficult to make slight adjustments. That's why I was trying to modify this thing. And I'm more convinced than ever that I need to uh, need to replace it. 
Hello. It's been going for 15 years, or better, longer. Yeah, that's not bad right where it is. So even though, I don't know if you can see that. I'll, I'll widen out here. Even though it looks rather wide, or curled, it's, uh, it's about perfect for a 12 inch. So I'm not worried about it being a little over curved with the flat areas. Uh, because, as I explained before, I like the wire to go in and I like the wire to go in and then uh, push out on the ends as you uh, that was that was smooth. So yeah, go in the slot and push out on the ends as it comes down. And, uh, and I'll use the more curled one so it's really exaggerated looking and explain what I'm talking about here. So you can see the the air there. So as you tap the ends in and as you as you either push in with the uh, press or you hammer in, as the center goes in, it pushes the out it pushes the tangs out a little bit as they go. And so they go down and then they go sideways, which will kind of locks them into the slot. Um, I'm probably going to hammer these just because they're a, uh, uh, a compound radius. If I could go across the board with one size call, then I would probably just leave them. Uh, just, just push them in. This, the way the neck is right now, which just, you know, just a block of wood with a with a fretboard on it. I could lay this right on a drill press and not have to worry about supporting anything and push them in and that's what I've done in the past on new builds. Um, it makes it really nice for getting a really good firm push. I use the uh, drill press as a as a press and uh, just chuck the call up in there. It's worked very well. Uh, problem with that is when you're doing a guitar that already has a neck on it you've got to try to balance all that stuff and you can usually get so far with it and then the neck heel is in the way or the body of the guitar is in the way and so uh, more often than not it becomes a combination of the two two styles uh, but since this is a compound radius and I don't um, I know I'm not going to have whatever the radius happens to be like right here for instance because it's 16 here it's a nine and a half here it's who knows what it is going to be right there and I'm sure I don't have a call that's exactly that radius. So I could go down and press in with a smaller radius, like the nine and a half, and get all the ends in, and then come back and beat them all in. And I may do that, but uh, we'll see. So I am using the uh, the Evo uh, gold wire, a little harder than standard nickel silver, uh, and the and the color goes all the way through, so you don't have to worry about sanding the color off. Uh, when you do your leveling. I'm also going to take some uh, naphtha uh, lighter fluid and paper towel here and clean the oil off of these right now before I do anything. Then I'll, I'll reposition the camera and get you in over here. I'm going to I'm going to chamfer the, the fret slots uh, to make it easy to get the tang in the slot and also because the bottom of the the crown is in exactly a 90 degree has a little roll in it and, and that if you don't chamfer the slot it may hang the fret up a little bit. I want the fret to seat completely. Alright so I made an attempt I was just talking about this <clears throat> excuse me with the fret and uh, and I drew a picture and I realized it wasn't really oriented to the camera so I drew another picture and I'm not sure if you can see it very well. I've Let's zoom, let's zoom in some more. There we go to where it's totally blurry. Yeah, it's doing not just a fuzz on. There's going to do it. A little more. All right. So you can see I attempted to draw a radius without exaggerating it hugely, but uh, you don't have a sharp corner on the underside of that tang right like that it's more like this because these are extruded 
which means they're sh just shoved through a die and they come out looking like a fret. Um, so that is why on top of the fret, uh, let me cap this up, you take a, a three-cornered file. This doesn't happen to be safe anywhere. And, uh, and I'll pull back on this side because I don't want to chip it out. And then we pretty much just do this very carefully across all of the slots. And that is just to get a last space allow space for this little radius to drop into. And it also creates an easier entry point for the edge of the fret wire. When I get out of there, there we go. For the edge of the fret wire to drop into. Um, so that's, that is the purpose for that uh, little recess. So I'm going to cruise my way down this fretboard chamfering all those. And I'll bring you back in. I'll cut some frets. I have a, uh, I might want to go wide here. I have my my neck rocker block. I have a, a couple of these floating around here. I made these a million years ago. But I went ahead and I drew holes. Drew, drilled holes. Uh-huh. There we are. Drilled holes around here for my frets. Uh, everybody's got a way to do this, and uh, I've seen uh, one very well-known guy uh, just cuts all his frets and then runs, tapes them all together and pulls them off. Um, you know, I'm pretty okay with just cutting one and popping it in the hole with the corresponding number. Uh, I guess if you drop the fret on the board where you've cut it, you don't have to uh, count down to figure out which hole you're in every time, but. Uh, It's, uh, I'm just going to drop them in the block. I don't want to have to peel them off a tape later. So, that is a couple ways of keeping track of your frets. I suppose the other way is if you're an organized person and you're not going to accidentally come by later and sweep your bench off, uh, not thinking about it, you could just lay your frets in a, in a line right on your, right on your bench as you go, you know, so then you would know which fret is which. These frets, I am going to be cutting the tangs back. Uh, the fret slots do go all the way out the edge of the board, but if you cut the tang back, uh, you know, just a fuzz, then when you drive the fret in there, you, you all you have to do is come back later and, and put a little dust in there and fill that slot. And uh, you can't, it's very, very difficult with the naked eye to even pick that up. It's such a small little spot. Uh, but you will see the tang hanging through there. And many, many, many makers, manufacturers, uh, run their tangs all the way through. It's just what they've always done. They don't see a reason not to do that. Uh, if I guess they figure you don't want to see a fret tang by one that's got a, a bound fretboard, uh, in which case you have to cut the tangs within the binding. Um, but I just started doing this a few guitars back and I like the effect. I've seen people uh, that have CNC's actually CNC the slot into the board and leave leave the meat right in the end of the channel um, so that they don't have to fill it and their fret goes in very cleanly. That would be great if you had a CNC machine. Uh, I'm guessing most people don't. Um, so that's what I'm doing as of of now, this is how I do it. Um, so, I'll bring you back in after I get all these chamfered. We'll cut some frets, and uh, and at that point, I'll have some wire left over, and I'll make up my little fret gauge to check and make sure the depths of the uh, slots are deep enough. And uh, and I'll explain that to you when we get there. I change to a four-sided file. Uh, getting them a, a more even, a more even chamfer with it than I was with the three-sided file.
Okay, the heater's running, so if you hear any humming in the background, that's what that's about. Kick center now. I am just cutting the uh, excess, or not excess, there's a flat section that starts um, just before you have, you know, just before it starts to curve when you're running it through the bender. Um, so I am. I'm just cutting that little flat off and then I'm just going to come across here and uh, gauge them and cut them square square to the tang. Uh, if we go back to this this picture I'm cutting it this way so square to the tang across the crown. If you cut it this direction you end up deforming the crown and the tang uh, for farther than you want to back into the slot. So cut it, uh, if you have the fret hanging like that you just pretty much cut it straight down on it. And I am just dropping those in that block I told you about, the, uh, the neck block. So once I get these all cut, I will notch the tangs back. I don't have a, a t fret tang nipper. Um, seen some guys talking about one that is not made for fret tangs, made for something else. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to try that at some point. Um, with uh, this is happening right after Christmas and with Christmas and all the other holidays that have been going on, um, I haven't been making any extra cash. I would probably already have done that if I if I were. Two, three, four, five. See, if I was laying these on the board, I wouldn't have to count. So maybe that's a good thing. Uh, I do like to start at the fat end of the neck regardless of whether I'm doing a compound radius or a straight radius all the way. And the reason being, two, three, four, five, six, here we go again. The reason being is that um, once you get down to the narrow end, you have uh, you have shorter pieces. So if you so if you uh, run out of fret wire when you start on the narrow end, you might end up with a piece that would have been wide enough to use or long enough to use on the on the narrow end of the neck but not on the wide end of the neck. So we start down here, work our way back. going to do anyway because it's a compound is I'm going to cut all of this this size 12, 13, 14, 15, 14's right here and then I'm going to go back to the other end with the, the tighter radius and uh, cut from that end out so I'm kind of I'm not actually doing what I said but uh, because it's a compound I'm, I'm doing it a little differently now this piece isn't long enough, uh, well it is long enough to get the first fret out of it, but it's not the right radius because of the compound. So in a normal situation this would have gotten me there, and it's radius out past there, and actually that radius would work, and I can bend these by hand, I have a, a tool I made for that. So, But having said all that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this one. Uh, let me let me take a second here 
and explain this. And I, I'm, I've explained this before, and so, and I don't know where it's at in the list, you know, in the order or anything. I think I talked about it in the Martin uh, refret and also in a Les Paul refret that, uh, that I haven't posted any video on yet but it should be ahead of this video. So by the time you see this, I probably will have posted the Les Paul stuff. So I just take take a piece of fret wire, uh, cut the tang, and um, bend it. Oh, guess what? This stuff is a lot more brittle than regular fret wire. Hmm. Didn't know that, so I might not be able to do this trick with the Evo. Wire. What I'm probably going to have to do is get a piece of standard fret wire, or maybe do this and not bend it quite so far. Might have to get a piece of standard fret wire to do this. Uh, that's the same size as this wire, because the idea. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That'll stay together. I didn't bend. I didn't over bend it. So um, the height from the crown. Once again, I think I'll show you the picture. Line for that. So the height from the bottom of the tang to the crown to the bottom of the crown is what I want to make sure that on my neck and my slots that my the bottom of the slot is deep enough not to hold me up above the fretboard on the bottom of the crown, right? So the slot I don't want to make this too basic. The slot in the fretboard is, you know, here and here. And the depth of the slot, we don't want it to be too deep, but we, uh, we, don't, we don't want it to be too shallow because if it's too shallow, then that's going to bottom out in the slot and it's going to hold the fret up above the fretboard. So this gauge, what I'll do with this piece of wire, this piece of wire, uh, this gauge is uh, we'll take and we'll file the, the barbs off of the tang so that it'll slide into the slot easily. Okay, uh, I guess you can see them. I'm looking at this kind of on an angle and I can't tell if I'm seeing this correctly. But without the barbs on there, this, this fret will drop down into the slot. And then I can use it as a gauge to find out if I need to deepen these slots at all to get that in there. So once you have this all shaped properly, you don't take any off the bottom, just the side, so it slides in the fret easily. Then I can uh, check all the way across the slot and make sure that I've got full depth. Okay, simple enough. So once I get all the frets cut, that's what I'm gonna do. I don't think I'm gonna have enough fret wire out of just these two pieces to get back to number 14, which is where I left off right here. Um, so I may uh, probably have to bend that last piece of fret wire I had laying over there and, um, and cut it to finish things off with. Okay, so uh, there again, I'm going to turn the camera off now and go ahead and cut all these frets and do what I have to do fix that little fret gauge and uh, and it's getting late today so I'm probably going to, as far as filming, I'm not going to bring you back in tonight but I'll see you next time. Okay, good times. We are um, deepening the slots to uh, accommodate the, the depth of the fret tang and they work fine in the middle and uh, because when I slot the board it's flat and uh, and I don't want to over slot it when I'm uh, when I'm prepping a board so I just slot it uh, what I'm typically ends up being just a little shallow I may I may try to do I usually calculate this to some degree before I slot a board I'm, I can't remember back far enough in this video to know if I if I mentioned that or not but I'll usually take a radius gauge and uh, and trace it on the end of the end of the fretboard, and then try to attempt to uh, you know add the fret tang depth 
and and then gauge from there when I set up my uh, my little slot miter box. Um, so I've got a combination of tools here, and uh, sometimes because it's too easy to over widen the tang or the slot, excuse me, over widen the tang, I, I tend to stay away from the full on saw again. However, uh, in this instance. The full-on saw has a depth stop that I just jerry-rigged out of a little piece of uh, masonite. Um, so it can go, it can drop into a slot. And there again, that clamp might, no, the clamp's not really good. So it'll drop down into the slot and that's gauging me to where my depth needs to be for my tang. It's just a slight overcut on that. Uh, there's always the risk that when you're using the full-length saw, that you'll you'll pop out of the slot and you'll skitter across your fretboard and create a scratch. Um, I haven't actually done that with the big saw. I have the uh, handy dandy fancy uh, Stumac uh, tool that has a pull cut and a push cut blade that's gauged at twenty thousandths. It says so right on the saw. Uh, the teeth measure 23 thousandths. So um, the reason I am using this is because my slots seem to be a little tight for this Jazzco wire or Jezco wire. Um, uh, I can get a I can get a 22 thousandths uh, uh, feeler gauge in the slot here. The um, the tangs on the wire on the uh, wire are right at that, right at 22,000. So that with the barb uh, was was uh, was just like out here. Uh, can you, or am I far enough back into the camera? Yeah, I haven't I haven't dealt with this lot yet. So they they seem to feel a bit snug. Um, and by a bit snug, I mean it doesn't really want to drop into that slot at all. Now, uh, the tang that I've filed will go in there because, uh, as I showed you the last little section here, I file the barbs off of this. And in so doing, you actually take a little bit of meat off of the side. Um, so, if we skip back here to where I have this tape, this is the last slot I've treated. Um, Actually, that's not the last. That's the last slot, slot I deepened. I believe this is the last slot I treated with the uh, little extra saw, and it it drops in a little better. So it's at twenty three thousandths. Now, the one thing I have noticed, okay, this, maybe I haven't treated this slot yet. Now that slot feel, still feels pretty stiff. Okay, this one's better. So two slots away from the tape and still within vision. This does actually drop down to the barbs without a ton of resistance, which is good. Because um, it's barbs you want to hold you in there. If you have too much tang with, then uh, not now, but once I have the neck carved, it's going to be putting uh, pressure on the on the slots and pressure possibly. I mean, that's how you you actually get back bow into into non-adjustable truss rod type necks is uh, by uh, forcing the uh, the slots apart with fat tangs. Um, so I don't want to do that. I don't want to build a back bow into this thing by over by driving uh, too too wide a tang into the slot. <clears throat> um, even though this has a two-way truss rod, if you had a one-way truss rod, even though it was an adjustable truss rod, and you oversized the tangs, uh, you can loosen the truss rod all day long. It's not going to pull up against the tang width that's holding the holding the slots apart. Um, that's a really, you know, shot over the bow of an explanation of uh, of compression fretting. Um, the one thing I have had a problem with, um, and I've done it a couple times here in a matter of uh, five or six fret slots, is uh, well, let's see. Yeah, six. Um, I've actually jumped out of the slot with this little guy and scratched the board a couple times, and uh, not not super serious. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of the board 
the done, the, the slots deepened and widened. Um, I have actually, since I've been, uh, since I scratched the thing, I've waxed the saw and that's made a big difference. Because this, this is a brand new, this is the first time I've used this tool and uh, it has, uh, it bites, it really bites in the slot and it's very difficult to pull. You, in fact, uh, well, this is an untreated slot right here, yes. It's very, very difficult to even just pull that. So I'm, yeah, I've got a pretty good pull on that, and it does not really. Yeah, you can see there, okay. Okay, so I moved a little bit. So this one I may have already gone through. Okay, so what I'm doing is going up on an angle and coming across so that I'm actually cutting the depth of the slot, cutting the, widening the slot, okay with the teeth. Uh, you can see there that does not want to move. It's very very tough to move this saw. Um, I've, I've up until this point for the last the last refret um, that I used with kind of non-standard for me, non-Stu Mac wire, um, I, I used uh, the Jesco I gotta, I gotta look that. I can't remember now if it's I don't Jazz Car or Jazz Car uh, fret wire. Good company to deal with. I'm sorry, I, you know, if anybody from that company hears this, I'm sorry that I'm mispronouncing your name. Um, good company to work with, but their tangs are a little fatter than uh, than the Stumac wire, and the Stumac saws are set up for the Stumac wire. Uh, just to put it as succinctly as possible. So this is what I've been doing. I've been kind of fighting with this saw, pushing it, trying to widen these slots up a little bit so I'm not having a lot of pressure on the slot after it's fretted. Okay, and uh, so what I was gonna, what I've been doing, and I'll, I'll uh, just jump ahead to that here in a second is I've been running up the board with the uh, with the full-on saw with the depth gauge and uh, here we go um, with the de with the depth gauge on the saw and uh, cutting the slot deep enough to accommodate the tang the depth of the tang and then I'm coming back after that with this saw and widening the slots. We're only talking about a thousandths and a fuzz here, right? I mean, so it's it's a pretty tight tolerance that we're talking about, but at the same time it's just it's very, very hard to pull that saw through that and consequently uh, it can jump and that jumps out of the fret slot and skitters across your board with the amount of force it takes to pull that thing, you leave a good mark, which is what I did over here. So, um, I'm not chasing every one of these scratches as I do it. If I get across the board uh, with no more scratches, then I'll just lightly sand this area and get rid of them. Um, so, the way this thing works, and there's also, I was going to say, you've also seen marks in the camera, uh, like right here, 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 here. These marks are just where, when I wax the saw, I actually got just a little bit of wax up on the on the stop. And that doesn't hurt a thing to have a little wax on the board. The time this is all said and done and oiled and all that good stuff. So, with the saw in, in the groove, and you can't see it from that direction, but this, this piece of melamine is coming down, and masonite is coming down over here and stopping the saw and uh, this this is the very first fret uh, fret sliding saw that I've I've ever I've ever purchased and so it is also possible that it's cutting just a little a little thinner slot than what uh, it did originally because I haven't sharpened it or or set the teeth at all And I do have the neck clamp down because it's very difficult to hold the thing with one hand and pull on the saw with the other and not have something twisting up on you and causing even more trouble. So, 
Am I? Okay, I'm still in the shot here. Okay, so that's that's the process at this point, and uh, I'm going to finish doing that, widening the slots, and uh, then I will bring you back in when I put a piece of tape there so I know where I was. Um, <clears throat> bring you back in and uh, pop some frets in this. All right, I decided to do an obligatory filing of the tang because I got a little bit of tang hanging. There were, there were burrs hanging off the end of the fret where I'd nipped them. Rather than file each burr off so that I could get a cleaner nip, I thought I'd just get them close with the nipper and then come over here and do a little filing. What I've done is I put a, a notch in the edge of my, my bench here. And so the crown of the fret just rests in that notch. And on a small enough crowned fret, it will actually sit below the notch. I just deepened it a little bit. Um, but it's just a matter of just going at it and you get down deep enough and then you just start to see you the shiny spot, which I'm not sure you can see a shiny spot. You can see there, it's just uh, hit the, the flat of the crown. And so, since I'm just really not worried about a binding in this case, I'm just worried uh, that you'll still see a little T-shape hanging down in that slot. So I just want to make sure I remove that. And uh, it's not terribly involved. The, the biggest problem that I, I would say is in doing this when you're when you're doing it for a bound fretboard is just not going too deep. And then you end up with a gap between the fret crown and the binding. So uh, it's you get going, you move right along. This isn't a terribly coarse file, uh, but it you know this fret wire even even this fret wire isn't terribly you know hard to file. All right, so. Uh, that was number seven, so I've got to work my way around a bit. All right, everything is nipped. All the frets are nipped and filed and uh, ready to tap the ends into the fretboard. Uh, I'm just tipping this up where I can get a look at it and make sure that the, uh, the tangs are indeed um, within the range of where I want them. 